Hi. Now in this video what I want to do is show you how we can calculate probability using permutations and combinations and to do that we use the classical formula for probability which is that if you want to know what the probability of an event is then you've got to work out the number of outcomes which make the event occur and divide that with the total number of possible outcomes. And I've got a couple of examples that will demonstrate this. We've got here a committee of five people is to be selected then from a group of five men and six women. What's the probability that the committee contains two men and three women? So in order to do this what I need to do is work out each of these values in this formula. I'm going to start with the denominator. I always think that's the easiest part to start with in questions like this. Total number of possible outcomes. For this question it will be the total number of committees that we can form having five people in. Okay. So to do this as well what I'll do is have some dashes here to represent the people on the committee. So when it comes to looking at how many ways we can form a committee from 11 people, that's the 5 and the 6. How many different ways is that going to be? Well, let's just put the number of committees here that we can form. Now, for something like this, we've also got to determine whether we've got a permutation or a combination. Permutation, order matters, combination, no order. Well, this is going to be a combination. It's a selection of people. Order doesn't matter. So what we've got is we can pl place 11 people in, well we've got a choice of 11 people for this first slot so that's going to be 11. Once we've chosen one of those 11 people we're now down to 10 to fill the next space and then 9 and then 8 and then 7. But do you remember this gives us permutation, the number of different ways that we could fill these slots if it was an arrangement. But within those values there, within those arrangements, remember that these five people can arrange themselves within themselves five factorial ways. So we need to divide this by five, by four, by three, by two, by one. Now you could have done this by using the combinations formula because it's a simple based problem. We've got no repetition or anything like that. So you could have said well okay I've got 11 people and I want to choose just five people. If you were to work that out it's exactly this formula here and what it comes to is 462. Now we need to look at the special case now. How many committees consist of two men and three women? So we'll just put down here the number with, we'll put it in brief, okay? Two men and three women. How many would that be? Well, let's just put man one, man two in here if you like, and then woman one, woman two, woman three. We're not interested in the order here though. So what about the two men? How many ways can we select two men to put in these slots here? Well we've got from five men we can fill that first slot five ways. This slot can be now any of four ways. So 20 ways that we've got of essentially taking two men and arranging them. Remember this gives the arrangements but within any of those arrangements the two men can rearrange themselves amongst themselves two factorial ways, two by one. So that's the men taken care of. Now because it's in the same problem we need to times by how many ways we can put the women in here. And so for the first woman out of six there'll be six ways. Then for the next one there'll be five ways and then for the next one four ways. 
but this would be the number of arrangements of the women. We're not interested in arrangements, just a selection. Order doesn't matter. So within these three women, the three women can rearrange themselves amongst themselves three factorial ways, three by two by one. And again, you could have done this through using combinations formally. Because what you could have said for the men is that from five men, choose just two. And for the women, we've got six women, choose just three. So either way, that's what you could do. And if you work that out, you end up with 10 here times 20. 10 times 20 giving us 200. So when it comes to working out the probability that we have two men and three women serving on that committee, we use this formula here. So we've got 200 committees have two men and three women on out of 462 different selections of committees. So 200 out of 462. You could cancel that down if you like and that will give us a final answer 100 over 231. OK, well that's one example using combinations. I've got another example here that involves permutations. So in this example what we've got is each of five cards has one of the letters A, B, C, D and E written on them. The cards are shuffled and what is the probability that the letters A and B are together? Well, if we consider the total number of possible outcomes, that is the total number of ways that we can shuffle these cards, what would it be? Well, let's just put an intro here. And that would be the number of different arrangements. So order does matter here, unlike the previous example. OK, so we've got five different cards, so there's going to be five factorial ways of arranging them. Five factorial comes to 120. Now we need to look at the number of ways that our two cards A and B stay together. So let's have a look at that number of arrangements where A and B are together. So there's our intro. So with questions like this, remember we parcel them up. Okay, we parcel them up and that gives us essentially one, two, three, four items, if you like, to arrange. Well clearly that's going to be four factorial. 4 by 3 by 2 by 1. But in any one of these arrangements of four items within this circle, can you see that A and B can rearrange themselves amongst themselves two factorial ways? So we need to multiply that by two factorial. If you work that out, you're going to end up with 48. So when it comes to the probability that A and B are together, then we just use our formula above. So we've got the total number of ways that A and B are together, which is the 48, and we divide that by the total number of ways that we can arrange the cards, which was 120. So you got 48 out of 120. And if you simplify that, you get two fifths. All right. So hope that's given you some idea. Then, just make sure you remember this formula. Okay.